Okay, shall I start? Yes. Well, first of all, I want to tell you how glad I am with my Adventist family from Dubai. Uh, you bring me joy to give me this opportunity to share some moments with you as we start our Sabbath day. Thank you for this beautiful music, this small, beautiful girl. And I thank also Mirzi and Shella, Shella about inviting me to, to be now with you. And uh, I just want to tell you that I'm not anything that Sister just said, you know, I'm just a simple servant of the Lord as all of you, okay? Um, so I'm very glad to be with you tonight, starting this Sabbath. I'm in here in Iraq, my wife is in Brazil. So this beginning of the Sabbath, you have given me the opportunity not to feel lonely because I'm with you. Even, even though we are in the Zoom meeting, but we can see each other, we can interact. I can see your smiles, I can see families, I can see a dad with a child. Uh, it's so beautiful to see that we are a family. Though we have not met personally most of you, but we are a family. Thank God for that. Uh, I want to share my, my screen, if I may. I don't know if something... Okay, let me here and share this screen with you. The message I have, as you can see, an amazing message. Um, and we will see throughout the Bible many verses that... Um, portray what I want to share with you in the beginning of the Sabbath. Um, we were working for Adra in Angola and already we were married eight years, Adelsi and myself. And uh, we were in Brazil on annual leave. And for eight years of marriage, we didn't have child. We wanted to have a child. And uh, for four or five years or even more, we were praying for God to give us the opportunity to be parents. Um, other family members were praying. Other friends were praying. And when, when we had the last week before we had to go back to Angola, to the mission field. We, we had uh, the last consultation with the doctor. We took the opportunity in Brazil during the, our annual leave to do all the possible tax uh, exams that on that time were possible for us to know if we could be parents uh, or not. So here we, are, we were in the consultation room of the doctor, and uh, to receive from her the last results of the last exams. Um, we were praying. And then as we sat down with her in her room, she opened some documents. And the first thing she, she told my wife, she said, Adelsi, you are pregnant. Wow, can you imagine our joy? On that moment, after eight years of marriage, with praying, praying, doing all the exams, and suddenly, you know, the last moment, we were about to go back to, to Angola to continue our mission there. And the, the, the doctor, the first thing she said in the last uh, encounter with the doctor, she said, Adelsi, you are pregnant. Wow, we, we embrace each other, we laugh, we, we also uh, have tears in our eyes. It was a very special moment. 
and we praise God for that. And uh, after a couple days more, we were flying over the Atlantic Ocean, not only two now, but three. We were already a family. And as I see here in the pictures, in the, in the people who are here attending this meeting, this Vesper, I see families, I see that there are many mothers. And I, I'm, I'm almost sure, I'm sure that all the mothers and parents that are here, uh, I can imagine the, the moment that you, you learn that you were pregnant, the first time from your firstborn, what did you felt? I'm sure that you felt the same thing that we felt on that time. Now our daughter is, she is called Nayana Ellen. She is 24 years old. She's in Brazil uh, working as a teacher for teaching English to little kids in the Adventist school in our hometown. And uh, as we go through the Bible, I want to share with, with you amazing messages that we find in the Bible. And the first amazing message we, we find in, uh, in the Gospels and particularly in the book of Luke chapter, let me go here, Luke chapter 1 verse 28, 31, and you will understand what is the amazing message. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at, this, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Wow, can you imagine Mary? She was working at home, doing some chores at home, and suddenly an angel, a powerful angel comes, and I imagine that it was uh, with light, with a loud voice, a powerful voice, and she was astonished to see an angel in her house. And, and he gave his message to, to Mary. Mary, you are going to have a baby in a miraculous way. And his, this baby will be called Jesus, Emmanuel. So dear family of faith, brothers and sisters, yes, Jesus is an amazing message. And this message was also given to the prophet Isaiah 700 years before this encounter of Mary and the angel. We can read that also in Isaiah 7:14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. 700 years before, it was already prophesied that a virgin and the, will have, will born a baby called Emmanuel, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord. What amazing message. But um, I want also to take us to the word that God gave to, to Paul in, in Philippians. To remember us that what kind of sacrifice Jesus did for us. In Philippians 2, 6 to 10, we read, Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. What an amazing message for us today as well. This test is very known for, for all of us, right? That pictures 
Jesus deciding in heaven to leave the presence of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the angels, to come as a little boy in a poor family. He made himself nothing. He, take, he took the nature of a servant. And he came with a, a beautiful purpose to live a life as an example for us and to shed his blood on the Calvary so that we can have this hope, that beautiful hope that we have that one day we will be with Jesus in heaven for eternal life. But the verse 5 in Philippians 2 is very important. It says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So the amazing message for us is in this context of Philippians is that we in our relationships, we have to have the same mindset of Jesus, which was what? He came to serve. He came to be joyful to others. He came to give hope to others. So this is also, should be also our our way, the way of life, to be a blessing to others, right? To be followers of Jesus means that we are here on this earth to serve our, the people who surround us. But it's interesting, brothers and sisters, that the Bible doesn't tell us much about Jesus when he was a child or young. Uh, tells us very little about one thing is in Luke 2, 40, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. And uh, the spirit of prophecy also tells us that Jesus was an obedient child for his parents. He grew also learning with, with Joseph, how to help Joseph in his carpentry. We know that. Jesus was sp spent time in nature observing the ants, observing the, the, the birds, the flowers, how the crops grow. He, he learned through nature also lots of things about the power of God the Father. He also had time with the mother and the father, maybe in times like you, we are having now with our children in a vesper, when Joseph maybe opened the scrolls of the Old Testament and Jesus had also read those. So Jesus was learning since childhood about the Bible and the same, we have the opportunity as well. And in the same chapter, tells us about that moment that when Jesus for the first time was taken by Mary and Joseph, Joseph and Mary to Jerusalem for the feast of the tabernacle. The, and, uh, and he was forgotten by the parents. And when they, they noticed that he was not going back home with them, they went back to Jerusalem, Joseph and Mary, and find him where? surrounded with, with people who were asking him questions about the word of God, the Bible that they have, the Old Testament. And in Luke 2, 47 says, everyone who hear him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. So there is a, a lesson for us also, the importance for us to spend time with the word of God. And I want to jump with to another to other amazing messages that Jesus have left for us to experience in our own life as we move day by day until Jesus comes. And the first amazing message is you remember that the Bible tells about the time that Jesus is spent praying. Uh, he has fasted during 40 days. And he was praying that God gave, gave his strength, even that he was not eating during 40 days, but he spent the time 
in communion with God. And when Satan came to, to test Jesus, to assault Jesus with, um, with his words of de deceiving words, what Jesus did, he used the word, it is written. Many times Jesus responded to uh, Satan when he was uh, tempted by Satan. It is written. And this is an important message for us. We also are challenged by Satan every day in our faith, in our walk with Jesus. And when we are tempted by, by Satan, we should also express with our words the, the messages of the, of the Bible. It is written. You know, we have the commandments, we have the stories of Jesus that we have to be embedded in our mind. So we need to study the word as Jesus gave us the example. And also following other messages. In Matthew 5, 13 to 11, what we find here, we find the Beatitudes. Let us go quickly in, on these Beatitudes and feel how amazing is each one of these little messages. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek or the gentle or the quiet, those who are, you know, humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. So in these verses, we can see also amazing messages that Jesus left for us. Jesus wants us, as we call ourselves Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. He wants us to have the same attitude that he had and that he has. We have to have an attitude of mercy, mercy to others, to have a pure heart, to be gentle with the people, to do righteous things in our words, in our work, wherever we are, we have to be righteous. And also in a world that we live today where there is so much difficulties, there are wars, there are people who are fighting. Jesus wants us to be peacemakers in our home, in our work environment, wherever we are. Jesus wants us to be people of peace. And also, if we are persecuted, even if we are persecuted, Jesus gives us blessings, blessings because he gives us also the strength to overcome the difficulties that we have in this life. What amazing messages that Jesus has left for us. And in Matthew 5, still in this amazing uh, chapter of the Bible, there are two verses very important for us. And the first one is, you are the salt of the earth. And what is in 14? Who knows? What comes next? Who can help me? You are the salt of the earth. And after that, what comes? You are the light of the world. Remember? Two amazing messages that Jesus left for us as well. Um, here, uh, we, we read the Bible. Jesus is not saying, maybe you can be the salt. Maybe you can be the light. No, sisters, brothers. Here Jesus is saying, if you are my follower, if you are walking with me, you are the salt. You are the light. And uh, nowadays even is a challenging for us, I believe. It's a very challenging uh, issue for us. 
to be the salt and be the light. But there is very simple ways that we can walk day by day with Jesus, who give us the chance to transform our hearts, our minds, and our attitudes so that in whatever we do, whatever we say, we can show to the people around us that yes, Jesus lives in us, Jesus lives in our heart. And our attitudes, words will be like salt to help people also to know Jesus and to be light where there are darkness. What a privilege for us, isn't it? What a privilege for us to be salt and to be light. Also, in Matthew 4, 4 5, 40 and 44, you have, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That was the common understanding during the time of Jesus. In, even the, the priests, the leaders of the church on that time, they defended this, this understanding. Love your neighbor. Who doesn't not love a neighbor and hate your enemy? But Jesus said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Wow. Can, how can we do that? How can we love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us? But it's, it's very true what Jesus is asking us to do. Remember that Jesus, during his ministry, he taught everything that I'm sharing with you. He, he went to the villages and wherever he went, he healed the people. It's amazing to read and I feel so, so little when I, I read and I feel so blessed when I read that every time that Jesus was in a village and a blind person come to him and he was healed or a lame person came and he was healed. The Bible says that he healed everyone. So when Jesus tells us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, he will give us the strength to, to have this capacity he will give us the strength to have the capacity to love those who harm us. Yeah. And finally, another amazing message. You remember in Matthew 8, 13, this verse, go, let it be done just as you believe it would. Is the story of the Roman centurion. He came to Jesus and asked him, Jesus, please heal my servant. And what a beautiful man this man was, because, you know, on that time, servants, they didn't value much. Sometimes a cow was more worth than a servant, right? Or a sheep. And this man, he loved his servant. And he came to, on behalf of the servant, and asked Jesus, please heal my servant. But he also said to Jesus, you don't need to go to my house. You know the, the story. And Jesus said, go, let it be just as you believe it would. What an amazing story of faith of this man. And in Matthew 9, 2, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And then in the following verse 6, get up, take your mat and go home. You remember also this, this story when four, other, four friends of this man who was crippled in a mat, he could not walk, maybe from birth, but these four men that carried the mat had faith that Jesus could heal him. And the, the sick person, the young, lame, crippled man also had faith. And because they, they showed this faith, Jesus heal that man. Faith is very important. Another story of faith in Matthew 9, 22. Take heart, daughter. Your faith 
has healed you and you know this story this women woman who was uh, suffering from a disease during 12 years can you imagine sometimes we get a flu we stay five seven days you know to heal and we feel miserable isn't it special now with covid anything that happened oh it's covid and we are afraid but if we have a wound that takes several days to be healed you know a pain is 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 terrible but this woman was 12 years old 12 years with this disease and she had faith if i can just touch the clothes of jesus and she went with faith and jesus immediately told her take heart daughter your faith has healed you what amazing message for us, my dear family of Dubai. We need to have this faith that Jesus can give us. The faith that can overcome all difficulties in life. But you may have a question in your mind. Okay, this is so beautiful and we believe. But can, how can we do this? How can we have this faith? How can we love the people who don't love us? How can we have the same character of Jesus? How can we be light? How can we be salt among people who don't know Jesus, who are against Jesus even? Well, you know, I think it's very simple. And I have three verses that I want to share with you. If it was difficult, <clears throat> God, Jesus, will not ask us to follow him, to be light, to be salt, to have faith, to have a life of living every day with Jesus. But let's see these three verses. Matthew 4, 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And if you remember the previous verses, Jesus was talking with the people, with his disciples, and he was telling the people, look at the birds. The birds, they don't sow, they don't harvest, but they have, day after day, they have their food god provides to the birds and i i love birds i am a bird watcher whenever i have the opportunity to go to the nature and i don't forget to take my binoculars i am i'm watching to the birds i can because of the ears observing birds i can by hearing their singing i can say oh that bird is that bird and I can describe him and it's amazing how God loved us so much to give a variety of birds in nature. And he is he's saying uh, that he provides for the birds. And also Jesus told the people, look at the flowers. I Im imagine Jesus seated on a rock in a place where, where he could they could see some flowers around and who doesn't like to see flowers to have flowers in our home in our garden because flowers are so beautiful and they represent also a, an amazing god a powerful and a loving god and jesus was telling look these flowers today they are blossoming they are beautiful but tomorrow they are you know useless but even though they they dress themselves even better than solomon or, or other kings and here in this text god is promising to give us everything we need but we need to seek him first in our daily life sometimes i i'm honest with you sometimes i put the work first i wake up i have so many things to do and i jump to work and this is not what jesus wants 
Jesus wants to test our faith. So the first thing for us, brothers and sisters, though you have a busy day, maybe you have to uh, wake up early morning to go to your work, but the, the promise is if we seek God first, he will provide our needs because he is trustful. He is faithful to his promises. Another test, very simple. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Commit your way to the Lord. I like the Portuguese version, which says, give your life to, to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. You know, this can be a challenge for us because sometimes, yes, we want to surrender our life to Jesus, but there's something in our heart that, okay, this is reserved for me. There's something that we know that we are not giving our complete heart to Jesus, but we have to experience this every day and deliver our heart our ways to, to the Lord, and he will guide us through. And finally, brothers and sisters, Deuteronomy 6, 5, love the Lord your God with all your heart and will, all your soul and with all your strength. Isn't it simple? God is not asking us, oh, give me, 90% of your income or give me a full day of work or no. He just is asking us to surrender our life completely to him, to seek him with all our heart. Nothing can take more importance in our heart than Jesus Christ. With all our soul, with all our strength, and I want to leave these three verses with you. Uh, I know that you know them even by heart. Uh, I just want to remind us tonight about these three verses. That God, Jesus, our God is an amazing God. He loved, it. He loved us with a love that we cannot even imagine. And even if we we are sinners, we fall, we sometimes we betray Jesus, but when we surrender our life to him, when we run to Jesus, no matter what we have done, we always will find Jesus with his arms stretched open to receive us like the father receiving the prodigal son. So my prayer this evening, beginning of this blessed Sabbath, is for us to surrender our heart, our mind, our life completely to Jesus. And let us experience the power of God in our life every day. We don't need to even to speak, but our manners, our way to relate with people around us, is a testimony and if people give us the chance the holy spirit will put the words in our minds to talk with the people so may god bless us to to interiorize in our hearts in our minds in our daily life these amazing messages Be, and beyond all the amazed person of Jesus in our life. May God bless each one of you as you continue to, to experience this Sabbath day, as you continue to serve him, serving God in Dubai, in whatever you are doing. May God bless you. And I want to invite you to close your eyes and we are going to pray now, right? Okay, let's pray. Our amazing God, you are eternal. You don't have a beginning 
you don't have an end. You are everlasting. You are the God that have created the universe. Billions of galaxies with billions of stars. And here we are in this planet Earth where there are seven plus billion of people and you know our name, you know our address, you know our heart, our mind, and you love us so much. Dear Jesus, our God, praise your name for what you are and for what you have done in our lives. I'm sure I'm pretty sure that each one of my brothers and sisters who are hearing my prayer, I'm sure that they can count countless blessings in their lives that you have given them. And we are thankful for everything you have done in our lives. We are thankful for your word that is powerful, that changes the life of people, that show us so many beautiful things, stories of faith, and above all, that tells us about the beautiful hope that we have, the promise that you have given to the disciples and to the Bible, to all of us, that one day you will come back to renew our bodies, our mind, and take us to heaven to live with you. I pray in a special way for the Dubai church that is represented here by several families, parents with their children. I pray for each one of them, dear Lord. You know that they have also their own challenges. We all have, but you know also that all of us we are willing to walk with you every day. Strengthen our faith, transform our heart, cleanse us from our sins, and may us enjoy this Sabbath day, this blessed and separated day that you have given us to have special moments in your presence as a family and as individuals. And I pray and I thank in Jesus' special name. Amen.